Now we will have a joint discussion about the economical feasibility of the bio refineries and as an uh, surprising quest I would like to ask speaker from the next session from 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 Germany uh, Tim or Silvia to to come also to this mini panel So uh, the the topic of this discussion is is about economical feasibility of the bio refineries and I will take to warm up I will take the opportunity to for for the first question and and as far as I understand the, there are two possibility uh, possibilities for for bis businesses in in bio refineries and the first one is is with bio refinery technology itself and and the processes what what can be done with that and the second one is is uh, about the services how to how to enhance the business development with with uh, different kind of services around this this uh, bio refinery to upscale to take the needed steps for the full scale plants so i would like to ask what were the most interesting findings in above project in that that respect and uh, please take a circle okay so uh, at least the point that um, uh, elias thought that uh, it always takes some times uh, before there will be coming these results, but uh, it's not longer than two months, maybe. It seems to be one rule of thumb. And surely if the testing period could be uh, longer from that, there could be done this optimization and the uh, different uh, results would be much higher, as Ansi already indicated. So it gives uh, idea that uh, it is possible to um, use these microorganisms and, and things from nature more in industrial scale and got lots of benefits from that. Okay, uh, <clears throat> if I forget this Apple experiment, the most interesting result for me was that um, uh, it, it, we, this pro, pro, procedure pro, uh, produced uh, so clean aliphatic compounds uh, it, it turned all these uh, hydrophobic amino acids so that at the end of the last experiment we had almost pure uh, aliphatic compounds and as a chemist I'm wondering what, what to do with this valid acid uh, if you decarboxylate this then you have uh, maybe butane or it may be more useful than butanediol or, or you can uh, yeah, anyways, I, I think you could turn these uh, compounds uh, to, to in, invaluable uh, comp, uh, chemicals rather easily. Uh, in fact, this maleric acid, the butyric acid, it's better than uh, butanediol because you have just to decarboxylate and, uh, or, and on the other hand, this maleric acid and butyric acid, you can make a salt and you can remove the salt uh, or the gas produced from the salt must much more easier from water than butanediol. Butanediol is not easy to separate from water. Well, this is an uh, opinion of the chemist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we come to the mechanical engineering part. From the, um, I would say from the engineering point of view, now we're running more or less like a batch bot process. And, and we are learning, and these were technical trial runs, as I mentioned in my, in my speech. I think the next steps would be to make the process more or less continuous from, from moving towards the continuous process, moving from the batch to the continuous process, and, and make, it, make it a little bit even more quicker than what we have learned up to now. And, and of course, the economical, economical Feasibility studies need to be assessed as well to start calculating the investment costs for a total plant. Those those are next next steps from from this this point point on. 
Uh, I look at it from the waste management uh, side because I normally deal with waste and I can compare it with the normal uh, technologies that are now available. And the technologies that deal now with municipal waste are in Poland, uh, most of it is still buried in the landfills and now it starts uh, the incineration. Uh, but then we lose a lot of um, um, uh, precious materials which we can uh, utilize when we um, apply these alternative processes. So we just uh, have to learn how to control all these parameters and then we can get a richness of substances. Th these uh, substances we get otherwise from the petrochemical industry, so not in a sustainable way. And uh, as you may be aware, the European Union is also stressing very much on recycling and increasing the recycling rates to 70% of municipal waste. And I think the current recycling technologies are not ready to uh, recover so much. And this is a kind of a basic, like turning uh, uh, substances to basic um, uh, substrates, like chemical recycling, which is, I think, very uh, good experience and the technology of the future. Um, I was not involved in the biorefinery process, but more in the pilot B process. So I can compare this process maybe to the biogas plant process uh, in the economy part, because we did the economy assessment for the biogas plant process. Um, and I think it's a main task for the future to look at the economy of this process, if it's really profitable. So maybe in our next um, presentation, we will talk a little bit about the economy assessment of our biogas plant process, and we will draw a comparison to the consolidated bio process. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I found very fascinating that we have the very big bandwidth of different waste materials from uh, slaughterhouse waste, from manure and from municipal solid waste um, regarding the biogas process and also for the for the biorefinery and I think it's a good approach we will see in, in our presentation to to combine these processes and to to decrease the amount of waste that's that's forming and forming like a chain process in order to get most of the value out of these waste materials. Okay, we've heard about different perspectives now, like uh, we've had a mechanical and uh, so on. Uh, my perspective then would be control and optimization. And uh, I think the first thing, of course, continuous operations that is very good. And then do systematic uh, testing while you're varying the, the different various we can control in different ways, not one at a time, but several in a structured way to produce good models and then also do measurements. We have now some measurements to try to identify more how do we optimize actual production and then integration between uh, we have the biorefinery, we have the separation and we have the biogas production, how to optimize the system uh, for those. And I think that is the new challenge uh, we, we're seeing. So I, that is very thrilling, I think. Thank you very much. And now, dear audience, it's finally time for your questions. Please. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, you can have a question. There's also a question there. So the when you have first like uh, like uh, manure and then you would like to have another type of bio waste which is so hard to maintain in the waste pipe. So uh, I was asked to uh, uh, repeat the questions for the uh, to the mic. So the question was about about how uh, difficult or hard it was to change the feed in the process to the different sources okay if i if i start from the mechanical perspective of course the um pumps and the and the valves and the vessels they were designed for all kinds of bio waste masses of course the pumps uh depends on uh, the dry mass content and and the um 
part, uh, the particle sizes of if there are some big chunks or rocks even in the in the masses. Of course, then the, then the pumps are are getting like we got in Sweden. They were clogged. The rocks were a little bit getting getting in the way. But um, according to that, it was it was it doesn't really matter the mass, what kind of mass we are using. So that that process we have designed in that way. But for the microbiology, I think Elias is the best one to answer that. I think that's that's the most important part to optimize the microbiology for each each mass. So the, in a way, this is this is uh, engineering work and also microbiological work. What we have to we have to have the competences in both in order to succeed in in getting the final results. Does somebody else want to maybe add uh, Emilia? Uh, yes, we have changed the substrate from potato to and then added uh, kitchen waste. So just uh, from the side of the process, from the mechanical side, it was not difficult. I think uh, it is um, a challenge, again, to understand the, all the biochemical biochemi um, reactions that are then uh, happening. So we need to have really basic knowledge of what happens if we add now more hydrocarbons and uh, uh, more uh, fats or other uh, substrates and what effect it has on the outcome. So we have to learn a new process simply. Thank, thank you. Other questions? Okay, please. Uh, this is not an economical question, but uh, I was interested in about the hydrolysing step. What kind of enzymes were used in this hydrolysing step and were they all the same in different uh, trials? Maybe if we pass the mic to Elias. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they were commercial enzymes, and some of them were not allowed to be published by the manufacturer, so they were trials in a way, and we were using combinations we had tried before. And uh, so they were uh, some cellulitic enzymes, some amylolytic enzymes, depending on the waste, and also some proteolytic ones. And a uh, very good choice for the slaughterhouse waste was uh, to add some liver because uh, animal liver, waste liver, was containing very good levels of uh, useful enzymes and that worked out quite nicely. So it's a combination of different enzymatic act activities we have been using. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Please. says that they uh, think about uh, calculating the investment cost. Why you are calculating the investment cost? Because no one would like to make, lose any money. Your investment means that some, somebody lose some money for something. So why you don't calculate the profit per hour? I mean, how much money the businessman will earn more than they earn now? That's what they would like to hear. And when you, for example, the summer cell case, when you calculate how much money the summer cell will make more than now per hour, then uh, Mr. Bermund Scurfit will pay the bill even yesterday. <laughs> Other way you try to do it's based on that. Exactly so. Thank you. Thank you for the nice comment. And, and I agree totally with that that uh, comment, but of course um, we need to know the investment cost anyhow in order to calculate the, the cash flow capital. So we need to know how much, how, much, how much investment we need to put into the plant so in order to calculate the cash flow because this equipment is it's really unique and new and, and we've, we've just, we're just in the beginning phases in order to get the plants. Of course, there, there are Chinese examples and there are some, some samples we know, know the cost. But anyway, I think one aspect for, for Mr. Smurf, it would be that he would get more or less rid of the um, gate fees that he's paying at the moment, approximately 1 million euros per year. So in order, we could convert that into useful, we could convert the chemicals into, into um, capita, and also, also a fertilizing 
aspect is we could use the residues left from the from the process we could convert those also into fertilizers so i would say we could double the amount of gate fees what he's paying now so we could get more more into but of course we need to calculate the investment cost for in order to get the get the exact amounts for for mr smurfit thank you um, there sorry, please please can i add okay <laughs> okay sorry sorry of course wait a minute yeah. so maybe the next presentation will help to answer your question a little bit because we did this what you ask for the biogas plant process in our above project and we created some cash flow calculations as model biogas plants and there we calculated the investments and the possible operating costs and calculated the operational cash flow so that would be the task for the biorefinery to to answer this question okay thank thank you and now your question Okay, so the question was estimation for requested uh, investment size. <laughs> How many million? <laughs> well, of course, it depends a lot on the on the amount of, of waste what we are treating. So, in in order to start calculating the investment cost, we would need from from the potential customer the amount of produced waste and also the um, concentration and, and, the, and the, what type of waste we are, we are treating. So that's, 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 um, those are the, those are the um, requirements what we would need to, in order to calculate the, the investment cost. But Elias is, has his hand up. <laughs> I think he has an answer. Just a brief comment that if we increase the throughput of the waste uh, through the process, so we can minimize the size of the investment. The vessels are not so uh, expensive, and so also the, for, the shape of the vessel. It's not necessarily a cylindrical tank. It can be a pool or whatever you can imagine. So we can lower the investment remarkably, and we have calculated that it's. Uh, just some 10 to 20 percent of the commonplace investment for a full-scale industrial type of uh, waste processing. So it's it can be made very economic. Okay, thank you very much. I think that we have used our time this point. So we will have a final panel discussion uh, opportunity to discuss further if you have any questions. But now we will have time for coffee break. It's 15 minutes and. We'll meet here 20 past two. <laughs>